great. Hi, everyone. Hello. <laughs> um, a little bit about us. Uh, we've been together for a year. A little over a year now. A little now. over a year now. And uh, I started drinking whiskey prior to being with her, but I kind of introduced her to it. So it kind of evolved into a journey together with the both of us of exploring whiskey in general. And we've, we've come to see that there's a lot of different whiskeys out there that people are saying are good for people that are beginners. But at the same time, when we were beginning, I mean, I, I started off on... <laughs> <laughs> on something horrible for a person that has no idea what it's supposed to taste like, tastes like. I started off on Highland Park 12. I wish I would have been introduced to um, some smoother whiskeys. I'll just say smooth because Highland Park is a little bit hard. It's it, It'll kick you. It'll <laughs> kick you hard. And and I, I, that was my fault. But over the years, I, I've been doing this. And she's been doing it for a year. We've, we've actually tried a lot of different whiskeys. And... We've come to a consensus of what whiskeys we wish we would have tried before we actually tried the ones that we tried, <laughs> because it would have introduced us better to the 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 differences within the whiskeys. Uh, it, it's 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 interesting. <laughs> uh, anyway, we have eleven. Count them eleven. Not 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 not, not 10. ten. Not ten. We don't eleven. Know how, we don't know how to count. Uh, we like. Odd numbers, not even numbers. So mm -hmm. there's that. So if you have a problem with that, uh, you probably shouldn't click on this video. <laughs> probably not. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'll go ahead and let her start. <clears throat> so the first one that we came up with is an Irish whiskey, uh, Jameson, from 20 to $22. It varies state by state, as we all know. Uh, you want to take the second one? Uh, I'm actually just going to say a little bit about Jameson here. Um, I actually started drinking Jameson when I first turned 21. And, of course, it was like the drink to have along with Jaeger, which I don't touch anymore. But that's beside the point. Uh, <laughs> right now, we actually don't have the regular Jameson bottle. We actually have the Black Barrel, which I, I prefer better than the regular. It is a little bit spendier, but at the same time, it has more of a, a almost a bourbon type finish with the aspects of the charred barrel which uh, a lot of other whiskeys don't have unless they're bourbon or scotch. Yeah, and even if you do pour a little too strong on it, um, you should be fine. It's mix not mix it with coke. It's yes. amazing. Don't don't drink it straight. <laughs> this is for enjoyment. <laughs> yeah, for enjoyment only. I mean the I just took a sip of that and it was really vanilla, which yeah. if you like vanilla coke Add this to your Coke, and it's straight vanilla Coke, basically. Oh, you could do vanilla Coke well, with be, that. Which is, which is even more vanilla, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next one that we actually have on our list is actually Buffalo Trace. Uh, Buffalo Trace is one of the first bourbons I actually introduced her to. And used I, to be my favorite. I act, yeah, it, 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 it was for a very long time. <laughs> she, she turned 21 and I let her try it and she's like, I just want this all the time. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then of course me being me, I'm going out and buying other stuff and having her try other things. And she got mad at me because I made her favorite whiskey, her not in favorite whiskey anymore, <laughs> like four times in a row. Yeah. But it's. It's actually a budget friendly. It's an easy drinker. It's not something that's going to kick you in the teeth. It's not too sweet. It's either. not too sweet either, which is another issue that we had. Uh, we were going to put some others on this list, but they're... Well, Makers is, is really commonly out there, but we didn't want to put that on there because it's just way too sweet. It, it's... I mean, if you like that, that's fine, but uh, we want to throw together a more unique list than what's out there not only a unique list but something that if coming to whiskey as a first time you don't want to drink something like makers that's entirely too sweet and you mix that with a coke and your coke is just destroyed destroyed i can't talk today <laughs> <laughs> it's destroyed because the, it's so overpoweringly sweet i mean the coke is sweet to begin with with all the sugar in it mm -hmm. but then you add every other flavor that's in that makers and it just makes it taste it to intensifies me, the sweetness. It, it not only just intensifies it it makes it drums out the bite of the coke is one of the reasons why i actually like mixing my out my whiskey specifically with coke is the bite mm 
Yeah. It, it actually tones back the bite from the whiskey itself, depending on what whiskey you're drinking. <clears throat> um, I'm going to let her take the next one. Ah, uh, the next one. So it, it's a scotch, and we all know Johnny Walker. Um, it's like $23. Uh, Johnny Walker Red specifically, but yes. Yes, yeah, the red label, not the black label, not the blue label, unless yeah. you want to spend $400. Well, <laughs> that's, that's actually the green label, but that's beside the point. Is it? Um, it, the blue label's above the, or below the green label. It's okay. It's weird with Johnny Walker, but <clears throat> the Johnny Walker Red is a very sweet scotch. It's not peaty. Mm-hmm. I, I I prefer peat. I I will art bag all day long. I the cult of art bag. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I like that peat of a lot of other scotches, but Johnny Walker actually is, is more of a, a, an easy drinker to me as well, because it's, it's just something you can sip on and enjoy. And that's the main reason why we're, we're doing this video in these channel or this channel is because we want people to be able to explore the aspects of whiskey that a lot of people are saying, Oh, try this, try this. And we want you to come at it at a level playing field where you, can actually find something that you enjoy and every single type of whiskey has a different variation of flavors to it which is in itself a journey yeah and there's multiple reasons upon reasons why people you know may be thinking about starting to drink whiskey i mean maybe you find yourself yeah. in a rut um with beer you know and maybe it's just not bringing enough to the table for you maybe you know you find that it takes you way too long to get to that buzz <laughs> stage and it's not necessarily about trying to get effed up but it's just you want to enjoy yourself and you want to enjoy yourself in a desirable fashion so maybe this is why you've chosen this path uh on on another note on that uh, and then i'm going to go into the next one um, whiskey is something that is actually about community in general. The amount of time it takes to make whiskey, the amount of people that put time and effort into that. And whenever you're drinking whiskey in a public setting, usually there's other people around you enjoying that as well. Um, I, if you guys haven't actually watched and you have Hulu, uh, the neat, uh, movie they have on there is amazing, by the way. Uh, the next one on our list uh, is definitely going to be Wild Turkey 101, one of my yes. personal favorite bourbons. Uh, I actually don't like bourbons much, but I love Wild Turkey 101 because it has that kick. It has that, s- I want to say smooth, but smooth is not the term. It's, it is very um, <clears throat> earthy. It, it, it is in a sense. It's more It's more there than other whiskeys within, your, within the Coke. Yeah. Because you... <laughs> You feel it, that burn, you taste it, and it's that flavor of like, mm, okay, I'm a little warm now, that's soothing. And it, it's one of my personal favorite bourbons. All right, and now we have Henry McKenna. So, a funny one with this. We didn't really um, come across this by choice. It was more of a, well, we can't buy what we want right yeah. now, <laughs> and someone offered this. And we thought it was going to taste like utter garbage, but it was actually pretty decent. It's it's actually a really well balanced bourbon. Um, it's it's not my one hundred and one, but it's it's up there near it in my personal favorites of bur- uh, bourbons. I'm really not a huge bourbon guy. Again, when I say a bourbon is good. It's actually good because I prefer scotch, personally. Well, you get through so many bourbons at some point, yeah. and then you just start finding too many common things. You have that I'm vanilla, nervous. you have that bite, and, and it's just, it's not a journey or an exploration of the flavors. It's more of just, oh, well, this is the same thing as the last one. Eh. And quite honestly, with this entire list of things, for the most part, there is no loss in it. So, you know, if you end up don't liking any, if you end up not liking any of these options, then the worst thing is you just lost 20 bucks. You lost 30 bucks. We, we actually ended up trying to aim for cheap things that you could actually try and get to a point where you can understand what a bourbon or an Irish whiskey or a cheap 
scotch is. Yeah. Uh, upper in the higher ends, you do actually have more variation with a lot of different things. Uh, you can get into your rise, you can get into your sour mashes and such with your your any of the whiskeys. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then the next one on the list is going to be uh, Bullet or Billet. I don't remember how it's said. Uh, the bourbon itself specifically, it's got a lot to it. It's it it's has definitely that, a little stronger. It, it is stronger. It does have a kick. It does kind of bite you when you're you're not expecting it, but it's a good bite. It's something that when it hits, you're like, whoa, oh. I mean, hey. imagine like a tough day at work and then yeah. you come home and you're like, you know what? I want something a little more than yeah. go for this. It's It's got that, hey, you've had a bad day at work. Hey... You know, it's been a bad week, a bad it's month. Friday. You know, it's 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 a bad year due to twenty twenty. <laughs> um, go ahead and have a little bit of that. You'll be fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, another really good bourbon that I actually enjoy quite well as well is uh, the Four Roses bourbon. Uh, I haven't tried the small batch yet, but the Four Roses is a very, I want to say, floral type of. Again with the earthy notes. Yeah, it's it's got um, quite a few earthal, earthy and floral notes to I, it. I mean, when you're starting this, please take the time to actually, um, you know, enjoy the flavors and embrace the flavors. Don't just try to chug it. Cause yeah, these these are this, not made to chug. These are made to enjoy. <laughs> enjoy that those rolling sensations off of your tongue. Like, oh, maybe that's a little bit of vanilla, or maybe that's a little bit of cinnamon. Oh, maybe I taste some. I don't know, juniper yeah, in there. Yeah, there's... I mean, just enjoy it. It'll take you on its own journey if you let it. And on on that note as well, the the reason why we don't have Jack on here is because it is the lowest version of a whiskey, in my opinion. And this is just regular Jack Daniels. This is not the other ones that they offer. The... Basic Jack Daniels doesn't have those. Those are the the flavors don't roll through the the alcohol itself. I mean, we're not trying to bash Jack Daniels or you know anyone that drinks Jack Daniels and likes it. I mean, if you like it, that's cool. We don't like it for our own reasons. And agreed. <clears throat> this is already a stereotype, so I'm gonna put it out there. A lot of people that drink Jack are just drinking Jack to get effed up. So. And that's not what we do. We want to be mature and enjoy our alcohol in style. And yes, that's why Jack's not on this list. So Regular Jack. <laughs> I mean, we've tried. Um, we'll get to that. We'll get to, we'll that. Get to that later. <laughs> uh, and actually, the next one on this list is, is a derivative of Jack. Take the floor. Uh, it's going to be Gentleman Jack. <laughs> Uh, Gentleman Jack, actually, I've I had for the first time after we moved here, and uh, it's it's not as harsh, I want to say, as regular Jack. It's it's actually almost an easy drinker, mm -hmm. but it's it's got some really small notes of vanilla in there that it. It, I didn't like putting it with Coke, which is weird because I love putting my my whiskey with Coke. But when you put the the Gentleman Jack with the Coke, yes, it, it it mellows it out a bit. But you had to pour a little bit more in there to actually get the notes of the Gentleman Jack, in my opinion. Is that all? Yeah, that, that's all I have to say about that one. <laughs> but yeah, surprisingly, that was... I haven't tried it yet, but he has, and it's pretty good. I so if he's saying it's good, then, you know. It's worth trying. It's worth trying, again. <laughs> um, then the next is Elijah Craig. This goes for $26, and roughly. It's it's actually worth buying. It really is. Uh, when we first tried it, it, it kind of blew us away, kind of like the uh, uh, Henry McKenna did. If you don't like um, cough syrup... Or like, you know, like that cherry aftermath, like that syrupy kind of coating. Yeah. That, it's very um, maple syrupy. If you don't like that, then you might not like that. But other than that, it's just a little stronger in your face with the syrup yeah. flavor. Uh, and then, of course, we have my, my, my uh, 
section of whiskeys again. Uh, we actually have another <laughs> scotch. Uh, <laughs> Glenfiddich, uh, 12 specifically. Uh, it's actually on the cheaper end of scotches. It's Sorry. actually it's actually also worth trying as a scotch. It, I jumped into Highland Park 12 with the scotches, and I... Suffice it to say, I had my ass handed to me <laughs> <laughs> on a silver platter. And uh, with the Glenfiddich, it's, it's more mellowed out. It's more it did approachable. Have a kick. It did have a kick, but it is more approachable as as a new person coming to whiskey, mm-hmm. in my opinion. And then our eleventh one. I'm gonna let her do that one. Ah, I don't even know anything about that uh, one. Okay, okay. so, I so that one. So <laughs> the the eleventh one is is an Irish whiskey, and it's uh, Bushmills, which is it's it's comparable to Jameson. And the reason why we actually have 11 on this list is because we, we started thinking about the whole, we need more scotch, we need more Irish, because I don't want to base this entire thing on bourbon. Yeah, that's boring. Because bourbon is an American thing. Like, you can only have bourbons in America, and all these other countries make delicious fucking whiskeys. And I didn't even get into the Japanese ones thinking about this at all. I... They're expensive, though. They're, um, <laughs> yeah, 40 and up. And, and the reason this whole list was made was because we wanted to try and reach out to people and be like, all right, we have some experience with this whiskey, and we're going to try and make a list that people can actually approach, and especially for people that are new. And with what we've discovered through our own journey within whiskey. We there's so many variations within just the bourbon category that a lot of people haven't really seen. Like yes, a lot of bourbons are vanilla. Yes, a lot of bourbons are 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 very sweet. But that's on the lower mid-range. In other videos we're going to get more into that, but <clears throat> thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a good weekend, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, if it's your Monday, I'm sorry. <laughs> but maybe this will help. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye.